this lesson is on the different types of organic chemistry reactions. They are broken down into three different types of reactions. The first is the addition reactions. The first addition reaction is halogenation. This is when you have an alkene, you add a halogen and this forms a haloalkane. Here is an example. If you have an alkene of propene, you have the double bond between the two carbons over here. You add a halogen, for example, fluorine, and then this fluorine builds onto the carbons that had the double bond, and there's no longer a double bond. This becomes 1, 2 difluoropropane. It's important to know that this halogenation is a FOST reaction. Hydrohalogenation, this is when you have an alkene and you add a hydrogen halide to form a haloalkane. For example, you have ethene and you add hydrogen fluoride. Once again, this hydrogen and fluorine add onto the carbons that had the double bond. And this forms one fluoroethane. And a side note for number two is that no water must be present in this reaction. For number three, we have hydration. This is when you take an alkene and you add water in the form of steam to form an alcohol. Here is an example. We have one butene where the double bond is on the first carbon and we add water. This OH and H join onto the two carbons that had the double bond to form two butanol. There must be a strong acid catalyst. So in this example, we you can either have sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid. Um, and the water again must be in the form of steam and there must be excess of the steam. The fourth type of addition reaction is hydrogenation. This is when we have an alkene and you add hydrogen to form an alkane. Here is an example. If you have ethene, so carbons with a double bond, and you add hydrogen, this hydrogen, each of them will add onto the carbons that had the double bond to form ethane. Side note, you need a catalyst of NRPT or PD. Hydrogenation is used in the formation of margarine. Substitution reactions. There are only three substitution reactions. The first is alkanes to haloalkanes. The main gist of this is when you add a halogen. So here we have a basic alkane and we add the halogen fluorine. What happens is the hydrogen over here, it's substituted with one of the fluorines and this hydrogen will then join with the other fluorine and it will form this haloalkane along with hydrogen fluoride. A side note of this is it needs light or heat and it can continue until all the hydrogen atoms have been replaced by halogen atoms. Then the second one is alcohol to haloalkane. This is when we add a hydrogen halide. Here is an example. The OH is then substituted with the fluorine, like so, and then this OH joins with the hydrogen to form water. So in an alcohol to haloalkane 
substitution reaction, water is formed. It works best with tertiary al alcohols and there must be no major heat added. It's generally best at room temperature. The third one is hydrolysis. This is when haloalkanes change into alcohols. When you add dilute sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, this is a strong base. So here is an example. We have a haloalkane using fluorine and we are adding sodium hydroxide. The OH in the sodium hydroxide replaces or substitutes with the fluorine and becomes an alcohol. The fluorine that was replaced by the OH then joins to the sodium, like so. This reaction needs heat, this triangle means heat, and it needs ethanol. Then we move on to elimination reactions. The first type of elimination reaction is dehydrohalogenation. This is when hydrogen and a halogen is removed. So here we have an example of a haloalkane. When, add, when this is added to potassium hydroxide, the Br and H are removed from this haloalkane. The Br joins to the K like so, and the H joins to the OH to form water. The potassium hydroxide needs to be concentrated and there needs to be ethanol present. Also note that it is the hydrogen that is connected to the C with the least amount of hydrogens connected that loses the hydrogen. It's easy to remember that because the poor become poorer. So this hydrogen is kicked off and this bromine is kicked off. And then there forms a double bond between those carbons. Next is dehydration. This is when a H2O is removed. So when water is removed. Here we have an example of an alcohol. This OH, and this H are going to be removed. Again, the poor becomes poorer. And we are left with an alkene and water. Again, it needs heat and concentrated sulfuric acid. The last type is called cracking. You get two types of cracking, thermal cracking, which is under high temperatures and high pressure, or you get catalytic cracking, which is under low temperatures, but uses a catalyst. Basically, cracking is breaking up these long chains of carbon molecules into shorter and more useful ones. The definition of this is found in the guidelines, which is also very important. So as you can see, this long chain of carbon molecules has been broken down into separate ones. Some form double bonds, some don't, some can form triple bonds, all depending on the type of reaction.